One of the topics at the Friends Annual Meeting this year focuses on patient reported outcomes and using them to inform tolerability in oncology dosing studies. Follow along with the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag FriendsAM2022. Our annual meeting will take place on September 17th, both online and in person in Washington, DC. In 2018, Friends worked with stakeholders to define tolerability. The standard of assessment of tolerability includes clinician reported outcomes using the CTCAE and case report data, including dose modifications and discontinuations, dose interruptions, hospitalizations, and death. A complete understanding of tolerability should include direct measurement from the patient on how they were feeling and functioning while on treatment. Integrating the patient experience includes looking at patient reported outcomes, such as patient reported systematic adverse events, patient reported overall burden of adverse events, patient reported physical functioning, and other types of functional, functional assessments. Overall, the work demonstrated that clinical trials should incorporate PROs. How do we go about measuring PROs in clinical trials? PROs are questionnaires about the patient's experience. Many use PRO tools like PRO CTCAE to determine what to measure. PROs are measured to provide the patient experience data. This can be incorporated into each phase of the clinical trial. PROs are often collected using paper or electronic questionnaires filled out by the patient. The approach to how this is done is dictated by clinical trial goals. There's a lot of value in including PROs in clinical trials. Using well-validated measures, PROs, can offer a direct indicator of change in symptoms, function, or well-being during treatment. This allows patients to provide their experience. It includes temporality outside of clinic visits, making the data stronger and more consistent. Normally, patients and providers meet every few weeks, but using electronic PROs that push to a device there can be more regular measurements. PROs supplement the clinician's evaluation to provide an overview of symptoms from the patient perspective. Published studies have demonstrated discordance between physician and patient reports, which commonly, commonly includes underreporting of patient symptoms and severity. PROs expand lower grade clinician reports. And here we've provided an example of diarrhea, which is a commonly underreported side effect. Grade three and over are often what are considered for safety profiling, which means we may lose some granularity from the grade one and two. With PROs, we get additional information about frequency and impact on the patient's life. PRO assessments are more systematic. This data source can add power to exposure response analyses during dose finding. Before we get into how PROs are used in clinical trials, we wanted to walk through an overview of drug development. Once we get through pre-discovery and the preclinical work, we move into clinical trials, where the goal is to treat the patient and measure safety and efficacy of a drug for, for drugs that are not yet FDA approved using a defined protocol. If we break down clinical trials into their phase, phases, phase one focuses on safety and tolerability where you compare multiple doses of a drug to begin analyzing safety and tolerability. In phase two, which focuses a little bit more on efficacy, we see initial efficacy signals and compare at least two doses to determine the optimal dose to use for comparative studies. And in phase three, we perform our efficacy assessment where we have randomized control trials comparing the new therapy with standard of care to determine efficacy. This is also all, often called the registrational trial. So how do PROs fit into the different phases of clinical trials? For phase three, the efficacy of assessment, we have previously seen that we can collect PRO data from the treatment and, and control arms, which provides additional information that is complementary to existing safety and tolerability assessments reported by clinicians. These data are shared on FDA's website through Project Patient Voice. But what about early phase studies? In addition to early efficacy and safety, Project Optimist requests that sponsors use a dose optimization paradigm across oncology early in development that emphasizes selection of a dose or doses that maximizes not only the efficacy of a drug, but the safety and tolerability as well. 
And so we can think about the phase one trial as a dose escalation trial and the phase two trial as the dose finding study. But how do PROs fit into the dosing, into dosing studies? And this is what we will be discussing at the annual meeting tolerability discussion. The objectives are to identify opportunities, challenges, and solutions for using PROs to inform dose optimization in cancer clinical trials. Specifically, we'll highlight ways that PROs can characterize tolerability and support optimal dose selection, provide a clinical trial design framework for incorporating PROs into dose optimization studies, and discuss opportunities for using PRO findings from early phase studies to inform later phase study designs and to complement other data for regulatory decision making. Please join us on November 17th with our panelists to discuss this very important topic.